If you're not familiar with the Fast and Furious franchise, you might not think that there would be much they need to explain. Cars go fast, crash, boom, boy gets girl, the end. But in reality, there is so much more going on than you'd think. In fact, the last movies and the new trailer set up a ton of unanswered questions, and we are really hoping that Fast and Furious 9 is able to answer them. We've got to start with the one on everyone's mind. What is going on with Han? The biggest surprise in this new FF trailer was our good buddy Han walking in almost at the very end to everyone's surprise except for Dom and Letty, who apparently were aware that he was still alive the entire time. In this monumental trailer moment, everyone was completely blown away to see their friend brought back to life, which is a pretty fair reaction. In the FF timeline, Han passed away tragically in Tokyo Drift, and even though we see it again in Fast and Furious 6, that means that there has still been a large gap of time between his demise and Fast and Furious 9, at least three to five years. Which makes you wonder, why has he been kept a secret until now, if he has been alive the entire time? There has to be some big reason why he couldn't tell his closest friends that he wasn't actually deceased, and we are itching to find out what it is. It's clear that Dom has known for at least a little while, which is a very impressive secret to keep if you think about it. We're not quite done with Han yet, however, because it's not every day that people come back from the grave. So how how is he actually back? Did he survive the accident after all, or was he brought back? It's not like he was in a fender bender or anything. He was full on trapped inside of a burning car, something that no one we've ever heard of has ever made it out of alive. One of the biggest theories floating around is that he was brought back to life using the same cybernetic implants that Idris Elba's character Brixton Lore had in Hobbs and Shaw. The updates essentially turned him into a superhero, and we know that they exist in the same universe as the FF franchise, so the chances are high that Han received some of the same treatments. It would be the simplest explanation for how he made it out of the crash alive, but it does raise the question of who or what they buried in the Fast and Furious 7. Though, it would be fair to say that they might have just decided to settle for a closed casket situation. Either way, we need to know what is going on with Han. Moving on to another member of the Fast and Furious family, but this time, it's a blood relative. The trailer established that John Cena's character, who goes by Jacob with a K by the way, is actually Dom's brother. But wait a second, Mia was also in the room when this whole revelation went down. If we're getting our biology right, then that means that he's also related to Mia, doesn't it? Look, we don't claim to be geneticists by trade or anything, but we're pretty sure that that's how the whole family tree thing works out. So what's up with that? We might just be meant to assume that she is also his sister, but with the Fast and Furious, you never know. Maybe they're not actually blood-related. Fast and Furious is all about their characters referring to one another as family, even if they don't share genes. So it could just be that he means it in a less literal sense. If they are related, however, it's clear that one of them got their genes from the shallow end of the hair loss gene pool, and we're not talking about John Cena. We can't quite move on from the whole brother situation without asking one more question about Dom and Jacob. Dom has been all about family and has proven that time and time again. So how is it possible that he never mentioned that he had a brother for the past 20 or so years. It does seem from the trailer like he told Letty about it, which is good, but everyone else who Dom considers his closest family in the world are left completely in the dark? While it's possible that he was doing it to protect them, it seems like having the knowledge that Dom has a highly trained assassin slash professional contract thief as a brother who also happens to hate him for some reason might have helped them prepare to face off against him one day? We really want to know what's going on with these two. Are they completely estranged? or has Dom known all about Jacob's life from the very beginning? What was their upbringing like? We have questions, F9, and they better get answered. The passing of Paul Walker left an undeniable hole in the Fast and Furious universe, and while they've done a good job at keeping his character's memory alive, they really had no choice but to move on. Since it was settled in Furious 7 that Brian and Mia have simply gone on to live more quiet, peaceful lives in Los Angeles with their son, the presence of Mia in this F9 trailer brings up a few questions. For starters, are they going to address where Brian is while Mia is able to be with the crew in order to take on Jacob? Clearly someone had to stay behind with their son, so that could be a pretty good answer, but it seems like a reckless thing for her to do. Some think that they're going to build in a storyline of Brian having passed away as a reason that Mia is back and ready for action, but none of that has been confirmed yet. 
And if so, that's even more reckless because now she's a single parent to their son. Either way, we won't know until we can see the movie in full. The trailer for F9 makes it pretty clear that a lot has happened since we saw these characters last. They establish right away that everyone has really moved on with their lives, but the arrival of Jacob is what pulls them back in. Dom and Letty's son looks to be at least five years old, and they have all been living peacefully on a farm together. So naturally, we have a ton of questions about everything that has gone down in those years off the job. What does Dom do for work? Had he really traded in cars for tractors? And what about everyone else? Chances are we're looking at a fun Ocean's Eleven style meetup montage in which everyone gives each other the rundown of what they've been up to in the last five years and just how much has changed in each of their lives. The characters of Hobbs and Shaw have been Fast and Furious mainstays for a while now, especially The Rock who has featured in the films ever since Fast Five. And yet, when the trailer came out, we couldn't help but notice a couple of bald, heavily muscled absences from the screen. Vin Diesel is still there to represent that particular demographic, but the other two are clearly missing. So where are they? After the attempt to send Hobbs out on his own and Hobbs and Shaw, we had assumed he would still make it back into the regular franchise movies. And yet, apparently not. Why isn't he with his friends in this movie? Will they make an excuse for his absence or just ignore it altogether? And then there's Shaw. Since we now know that Shaw was responsible for Han's accident, and with Han coming back to life in F9, it's pretty surprising that we won't be seeing Statham's character either. His mom is even in the movie, so where is he? It's possible that they might drop in for a cameo at some point, or are just off preparing for another spin-off movie somewhere else. But either way, we want to know where in the world Hobbs and Shaw are. Okay, so we pretended to be done with the questions about Dom and Jacob, but sorry about it, we've got one more. We can't help but be super curious about what happened between them to cause so much hatred. Shirley Theron's cipher is seen reminding Jacob that he has been in competition with Dom for his entire life, and they clearly have some unresolved issues. But we want to know exactly what happened between them. Sure, we all feel a little competitive with our siblings, but clearly there is something else going on here. We might have something to prove to our brothers and sisters, but pushing it to the point of being ready to assassinate them is a whole other story. Again, we have to ask the question, what the heck was going on in their childhood? Jacob clearly has some deep ties with Cypher, who has been causing trouble for the FF franchise for a while now. But she seems to have quite a few more personal issues this time around than just the usual world domination that she has been driven by in the past. By the time we've reached Fast 9, she is borderline obsessed with Dom, and so determined to take him down that she is willing to use massive amounts of her time and money in order to get rid of him. And she's recruited his brother to do the job? At this point, we're super curious about what her real motivations are. Is she just trying to get him out of her way in order to continue to try and take over the world? Or is she completely fixated on eliminating Dom? It's seems like an insane amount of trouble to go to just to get rid of one guy who is now living on a farm and not causing all that much trouble anymore. So what gives? Generally, in all of the other Fast franchise movies, Dom and his gang have been sort of reluctantly called into battle. They all want to move on with their lives, but are the only team for the job and are somehow always pulled back in. Last time, it was Mr. Nobody who recruited the group, and before that, it was Hobbs getting things going on their behalf. But without Hobbs in this movie, and no sign of Mr. Nobody in the trailer, we have to wonder just who exactly they are working for, and who in the world is funding their enormously expensive escapades. Either they are all independently multi-millionaires, or someone else is footing the insane bill, but who? It seems as though this movie could be their first completely independent adventure, after being yank backed in by Jacob and Cypher. But we will never stop wondering just who is bankrolling them. They even have a brand new clubhouse. Who paid for it? Here's hoping we get a clear answer once F9 hits theaters. Do you have answers for any of these questions that we just mentioned? We would love to hear them if you do. Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button to keep up with all of the latest from Screen Rant.